Is this thing on? Okay. Can I get a show of hands? How many of you here experienced the classic childhood dream of wanting to be a singer when you grew up? Oh, is that it? Really? Not, not, not a lot of people? Ah, oh, shit. Okay, okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> well, it's a pretty common aspiration, I think, for, for us to have as children. But looking at how things have gone for me so far, I think it's pretty safe to say that I never really grew out of it. So um, I officially started on my music journey around 2021. I was fresh out of poly, which I attended here at Nghi An. I was a mass communication student here. And yes, shout out mass comm. Yes, at Nghi An. And yeah, three years later, it is surreal to be back here on this stage that I performed on as a student. Also, shout out to NP Voices Academy, the a cappella Woo! Yes. I never would have thought that I would get to speak at TEDx Youth, and I think that in itself is a huge testament to the fact that this path that I've taken on so far has been a hell of a roller coaster ride. I'm still only 22, I'm still learning as I go, and I'm far from being a veteran in this industry. But given that the past three years have been some of the most hectic yet fulfilling years of my life, I thought it would be nice to share some of the lessons that I've gained along the way. And uh, to make it make sense, I'm going to break it down into three key takeaways that I'll unpack as I take you to my journey so far, if that's okay. Okay, so number one, your future is yours to make, even when it feels like not much is within your control. Number two, you should never underestimate the power of representation. And number three, sometimes delusion is the solution. <laughs> I'm going to start with that one. So for as long as I can remember, there's been this incessant little voice in the back of my head claiming to know what I was meant for. It started off as this thing that I was just naturally very drawn to. I would sing my heart out for my family and put on little concerts for them whenever I got the chance. Case in point. Sorry, the screen very rubber. It's very old, the camera, but yeah. That's my dad. My dad's in the audience somewhere. Hi, Pa. Oh, yes. Okay, so, yeah, so basically the typical kind of uh, childhood dreams, I'm sure, um, those fantasies I'm sure many of us would have dabbled in growing up. The thing is, a huge part of me actually believed that those fantasies of mine could actually be my reality one day. And so you see, delusion. <laughs> and the same delusion only grew when I started writing songs at the age of 11. My parents were huge music lovers growing up, and the soundtrack of my childhood was filled by thoughts of really good music from the likes of A.R. Rahman and Frank Sinatra to Nora Jones and the Black Eyed Peas. I was also a huge fan of High Five. Do you all watch High Five growing up? Yeah, man. One, two, three, four. Real, yes. So yeah, and the songs from that show are actually so good. I'm so sure it had like this subconscious impact on my musicality growing up. But yeah, anyway, being raised with art like that in the background of my upbringing had a formative impact on the way that I learned to express myself. I've always loved words and the power that they hold. And so I fell head over heels in love with songwriting from the moment I tried my hand at it. The idea that you could capture such vast, complex emotions and tell intricate stories within a matter of minutes with a song has never failed to mesmerize me. And it has been one of my greatest joys to take on that process and make it my own over the years. And so I kept writing and writing, not really knowing where this would take me for sure, but knowing if there was one thing in this world that gave me purpose and that made me feel well and truly like myself, it was this magical art form. And the deeper I fell in love with songwriting, the more I began to feel that this is what I was meant for, even though I knew that the odds were very much stacked against me. A career in music is not a stable nor conventional one, and growing up in Singapore, this was not a fact that I could escape, and believe me, I tried. I would tell people I wanted to do music, and their response would go something like, 
oh, you want to become a music teacher? I was like, girl, no, that's not it. But yeah, just experiencing such sobering experience, um, exchanges like that and knowing for a fact that trying to do this as a career, especially here, would be a tall task, made it really hard for me to hold on to my hopes and dreams at times. But the thing that got me through those moments of severe doubt at the end of the day was really that same supposed delusion that over-optimistic, hopeful to a fault part of me was the one thing I could cling to whenever I could feel my dreams faltering. And if that part of me didn't exist, or if I had failed to keep her alive, I know for a fact that I would not have managed to accomplish any of the things that I've managed to do today because I would have given up. I think, sometimes, you need that part of you to help to keep you afloat and to help to get you through those tougher periods in the pursuit of your dreams, which there definitely will be. Essentially, what I've learned is that being delusional about your dreams in any way doesn't necessarily mean that you are dreaming too big. It could also just mean that you know what you're meant for. At the end of the day, the world is your oyster and barriers are meant to be broken. So just because something has not been done before does not mean that it can't be done. That being said, I think sometimes we all need a bit of help to remember that and to bear it in mind. And that brings me to my second lesson that I'd love to share with you today, which is never to doubt the power of representation. Representation has done so much for me in my own journey. So I was an aspiring creator with a focus, a primary focus on writing English music growing up. So I paid a lot of attention to the dominators of that market, who were mainly Western artists. And seeing the absolute lack of representation in this industry that I so sincerely wanted to contribute to made it it was really demoralizing at times because it made me question the validity of my dreams. What place would a brown Muslim hijabi woman such as myself have in the big leagues of the English music industry? I couldn't see myself taking up any significant space and it was quite tough to hold on to my lifelong dreams of wanting to move people with my music and believing that that could ever be possible. But then around my late secondary school life, I discovered something beautiful, or rather someone beautiful. Her name was Yuna. For those of you who don't know, Yuna is an amazing Malaysian artist who has blazed the path for herself. She has been operating on a global scale for years now, having worked with people in the big leagues like Asha and Owl City. And crazily enough, she kind of looks like me. <laughs> I don't mean that in like, oh, that we look the same, though I have gotten that a few times. I don't see it, but okay. Um, just the fact that she's a brown Muslim hijabi woman was enough to fuel my dreams. It was honestly one of the main things that got me through a lot of the early doubt that I felt and pushed me to take a leap of faith and give this music thing somewhat of a proper shot. And so around the time when I entered Poly, I started sharing my work on YouTube. None of those videos really ever blew up or anything, but with every new original song that I shared with people, I was able to find more and more faith in myself and in my art as I saw people, however few, connecting with my music. And that was really all that I ever wanted to do with my songs. Yuna got me to that point, and it made me want to do the same thing for others, because what I've realized is that seeing people from your communities who look like you or who share the same values as you successfully doing the things that you aspire towards makes such a huge difference. It helps a, a person to believe in their dreams and to see their dreams as equally important to anyone else's and everyone deserves that. And so, as you continue to grow along in your own pursuits, I urge you to champion representation for people from all walks of life because everyone has something to say and everyone deserves to be seen and heard. And as members of the youth, I believe that we are the people who have the ability to shift standards and to make a better, more hopeful future for ourselves. And looking at the state of the world today, I think it is safe to say that we desperately need that. Speaking of the future, the third lesson that I'd love to share with you is that your future is in your hands, even when it feels like not much is within your control. And I know it sounds really cliche to say that, you know, your future is yours to make, but in my experience, it has honestly been one of the main things that gave me some semblance of confidence when I was starting out this journey and given me the ability to continue to see it through till today. So for, for some context, around the time where I finished poly and I was waiting for uni to begin, I realized that I needed to give this music thing a proper shot because 
I could not see myself doing anything else. And I couldn't keep waiting around for someone to notice me or for one of my videos to go viral or anything because that was a game of luck and it was a game that I didn't want to play. And so my mom and dad urged me to make my own luck. And that's how my debut single, Pity Party, came about. So my parents have always taught me that if I'm going to do something, I should try and do it with all of my heart and with my very best shot. And that's the same approach that I have taken with my music. When I first started out, I felt like a huge imposter. I worried that people would see me trying to do this on the scale that I was trying to do it on and think that I was trying too hard. Or like, who does she think she is? This is so extra, you know. But my friends and family, bless them, helped me to see that I had something valuable and important to say with my music and that it deserved to be heard. And the only way to do that would be to give this my best shot, set myself apart and do it all the way. And so I gathered my mass comm knowledge with the help of my loved ones. We independently found ways to market myself and my music. So uh, for Pity Party, we put out an independent music video, we storyboarded and conceptualized that ourselves. Um, also did up social media posts, sent out press kits to people who could help us to promote the song, wrote press releases and sent it out to whoever who would read it so I could you know, get my music out there. It was some of the most tedious things I have done. It was one of the biggest projects I had taken on, but it was also the most fulfilling thing I had, I, had, I had managed to do. And that's how I knew that I didn't want to do anything else. And so I kept going. I was releasing single after single independently with my friends and family until I managed to get myself a team about a year into my professional music journey. And doing this has given me some of the most meaningful, fulfilling experiences of my life. And to think that I could have missed out on all of these things if I had not been able to get out of my own way is sometimes very wild to think about. And on that note, I thought it would be nice to take a quick trip down memory lane with you guys, if that's okay. Thanks, guys. Okay, yeah. So in the past few years, um, I have performed for Disney Plus at the Miss Marvel series launch. This was crazy for me as a huge Miss Marvel fan. I've also performed at the Esplanade a bunch of times, the biggest being my debut concert in the middle there, which we managed to sell out. It was the best night of my life. I have also opened for the Peachtree Rascals at their Singapore stop for their Asia tour at the Hard Rock Cafe. It was really fun. I was also at the Countdown show a couple of weeks ago. Oh, wait, okay. No. Ignore that. So yeah, um, sorry about that. Yeah, my uh, one of the biggest things that happened was my face was on the Times Square billboard. Yay! <laughs> yeah, um, this is one of those once in a lifetime things that I'll never ever ever get over. And all in all, after all of this, what I've learned is that what's meant to be is meant to be for sure. But finding ways to take ownership of your own aspirations can make all the difference because at the, at the very least, you will be able to say doubtlessly that you tried. And you deserve to be able to say that. You deserve to take a chance on yourself and on your dreams, regardless of how out of reach they may feel. And for me, one of my biggest fears used to be that I would wake up one day, look back on my life and realize that I hadn't been able to accomplish any of the things that I set out to do. And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that because you can make all the plans in the world and sometimes life will still have a better path for you than you could have thought of for yourself. But it was a genuine concern of mine and it hasn't been an easy road so far and it doesn't always come easily to me to look back and reflect and savor all of the wins and losses that have come my way. But I know in my heart that I will never wake up wondering what could have happened if I had given this dream a shot because I did, thank God. Um, not without the relentless help of my mom and dad, my brothers, my cat, my friends and family, all of my loved ones, my supporters, my team. It has opened so many doors for me and I hope others, and really what it's taught me, as cliche as it sounds, is that dreams do come true. And I think that we all have the dreams that we have for a reason. So if you feel like you know what you're meant for, or that you know what your calling is, even if it feels wildly unrealistic, don't let go of that feeling because that sense of purpose could drive you to do and achieve things that you can't even picture at this point in time. And so, just to rehash the three lessons that I've shared with you today, remember that sometimes delusion is the solution, that you should never underestimate the power of representation, and last but definitely not least, 
your future is yours to make. I hope that these lessons will motivate you as you continue to bloom into the people who you are meant to be. And yeah, I want to say it's, it's a huge honor to be here with you guys today. I want to say a huge thank you to the TEDx youth team for, for giving me the space to share my story. Um, this is a huge full circle moment for me because uh, my years in Yan were some of the best years of my life. And uh, I kind of started, yeah, shout out Yan, yes. <laughs> I kind of started on this journey when I was a student here, so it's, it's really a privilege to be back. Thank you for bringing me back. Thank you. And yeah, um, remember that the youth are the future, you are the future, and never forget that this world is your garden to blossom within and that it is far bigger than you can even imagine. I wish you all the very best on all of your journeys. Please know that I'm rooting for you always, and I'm so excited to say this. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs>